FGL Spring Tavern Tales. We are here in Bucharest. We're ready, almost ready, for the semifinals. I'm sitting here in the chill out zone with Raven and Gara. How are you doing, guys? Gara, I have a question for you. Did you survive the crash with the windows, window, uh, glass, uh, glass wall? Which crash? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I guess you didn't see anything, <laughs> right? You didn't see it coming. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> there wasn't a crash. Nice. Okay. Silly, silly lot. Huh? Well, <laughs> what can you say me about the tournament? What, what can you tell me about the tournament? Actually, I really I just looked at the semifinals. It's actually like the Sith versus the Jedi. We have like a, uh, two smog players and two <laughs> control players on the one side, and there will be like a smog player in the finals and a control player, like the 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 face hunter three O versus mm -hmm. the the smog shaman. That okay. That went like two O in 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 the end, and we have like uh, powder versus moody. moody. So that that's kind of cool. Okay, but and they will face each other in the final. Yeah, it's like right. good versus evil, right? It's like who's the, the who? Who's who? Are we just going with the smog control is evil? Are the, Yeah. Oh, okay. They're <laughs> evil. Everyone hates them. It's like okay. Everyone. <laughs> By the way, you can see your Temple Storm logo. You have to zip it, zip it up. You know. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for telling me, Lothar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sure you g you got a discount code for the, uh, discount code code for that, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Cool. You always get like um, a three percent extra fa a fabric once you get <laughs> one of those every time. Every time, it's it's great. It's cool. Cool to be part of the family, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, uh, am I supposed to like tell some stories here? No, no, no. It's probably it's best not. <laughs> <it's like laughs> <laughs> anyway, Raven, how are you doing? You went on a break, but it didn't last long, right? Yeah, it seems to be the, the theme. Whenever I'm not casting, the matches are always really fast. Uh, it happened yesterday with the 3-0 with the Shaman deck. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's just the way, but that's fine by me. It means I get to cast quicker. So uh, okay. that's all good. I'm looking forward to this match, though. Like, um, you know, I'm friends with Powder, and I think he's been playing really well. Apart from, uh, I was talking to him after his last match versus Ty's, where it it's was like... He was still asleep, right? It was th 11 a.m. At the start, he was like... Yeah, I just messed up. You know, when he ran the juggler in without mm -hmm. playing the minions. So that's fair enough. But um, I think he seems pretty confident. And I'm also, uh, we saw Tessin earlier on the couch casting. And because uh, he knows Moody quite well. And he's saying he, he likes to employ this tactic of playing quite slowly and, you know, trying to frustrate his opponent. But I wonder how good that tactic's going to be when everyone knows that's his tactic. So I'm pretty sure Powder's going to just be like, it's fine. Like, I can take my time. Okay, and I have to interrupt you because we will have an interview uh, with the players right now. So. Please, Diana, take it away. Thank you so much, guys. Well, after three days of Hangman and playing translator for a little bit, I'm finally here at the professionals table and I could not be happier. So Powder and Moody, oh, Powder and Moody. Uh, are you ready for the semifinal? Uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty ready. I'm excited to play, so. And, you know, you're one of, you caused one of the biggest upsets in this tournament, arguab arguably one of the biggest upsets. And now you're just one match away from the grand final. Tell me, do you think that uh, Moody is going to present a real challenge for you on that way to the real final? Uh, nah, easy 3-0. <laughs> um, how do you feel about that? I think it will be a very long 3-2. Okay, well, more men making promises. Now, Moody, <laughs> you are in the semifinal and you're here on your home turf in Romania, but we've just had a very dramatic uh, match from another Romanian. Did you watch that match and what did you think about it? I, I did watch that match. Uh, I have no particular impression. I just, focus, I just want to focus on my match and I will, I will do my best in the final if I have to meet him. Okay, Powder. Now, we talked a little bit in our uh, recorded interview about open versus uh, invitational uh, tournaments. How do you think uh, these events compare? Like, you had a lot of people here, some newcomers, some upsets. Overall, what? how do you feel that you've evolved in this event? And what w would people take from it to describe Powder? Do you think you've been consistent? Do you think you've been shocking in some manner? Um, I don't know if I've evolved, but for all of us that are here in the semifinals, so even top 16, we've won so many games from the original qualifier to the Swiss. And I mean, it is a lot of consistency. And when you win that many games, I mean, you can always take away that for at least you hope that the people at home think you're actually a decent player. So what would you 
I don't know. Okay, you are a decent player. You're also very salty, but that's not for me to judge. So now I'm just going to ask production to take it away. Okay, we're back. So my, my arm still hurts from that burn. <laughs> I got burned by Nemj when you were away, you oh. know, so they're getting quite consistent with the burns. Yeah, it's yeah. coming to the end of the event and everyone's just getting very aggressive. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. It's S like Someone it's is not a powder fan. <laughs> 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 well, you know, it's um, Modi is on his home turf, right? Yeah. So he's playing for Romania audience and um, we'll see how that go. But uh, we can talk now about s how the players were pl were doing in their previous matches, right? We have seen Moody mostly with his Zoo deck, right? Which is exceeding at board control, but he was kind of too consistent with trading instead of being the aggressor, right? Because you know when you're playing Zoo, yeah. you have to switch the gear at some point, right? Yeah. What do you think, Gara, about that? Uh, for, for me, not just that is interesting. Also, like when we interviewed Johnny uh, Druid earlier, mm -hmm. he said he didn't just prepare for like against Gruffy, he also prepared decks for the finals, you know. I really wonder, like, who mixed it up now at this point, you know. Like, who fought ahead the most? Like, is someone going to surprise us with, like, some, some special new innovation? Like, Powder, when he played against Tice, he brought, like, Malganis, Voidcaller, Reno deck. He, he mm -hmm. had, like, three different versions of Reno lock during this tournament. It's, like, insane. And he won, like, against Control Warrior. And when he played a combo deck, he was, like, super unfavored. So he, he changed up a lot. So this is what, like, personally me... Yes, as you said, like, um, those trading decisions with the Argo decks, but maybe they just realized, oh, maybe I'm not so good with that, so I'm gonna sw swap <laughs> to Reno. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, that, that can happen. Yeah, I mean, these guys <laughs> are, are locked into the uh, the decks they've picked for today, so they can't change F uh, after any of the matches we've already yes. seen. But uh, I completely agree. I feel like um, Moody was playing very safe, and sometimes that can be too safe and, and not actually close out the game. And, you know, mm -hmm. Powder's a experienced and good enough player to kind of uh, cash in on that, actually, yeah. and just take advantage. Um, whereas I think Powder's got to be feeling pretty confident. I'm not surprised. He, he, was, uh, he was happy. I think he's confident about this matchup because he just beat Tice. Right, you know, like he just beat Tice to get this spot. So um, if he can, his idea will be if he can take down Tice and he can take down anyone at this tournament. Yeah, you know, um, people on in front of the TV, uh, that's you know, TV as in PC. Yeah. Um, there, there might be having this um, this image of Powder being kind of cocky, like with with his banter and stuff. But he is very self self aware and polite, and uh, when we talk about uh, with him behind the scenes, right? Yeah. He knows that <coughs> when he was playing against Tice, his crucial top deck on turn six in the game game one between Zoo and Paladin was actually game breaking for the whole match, right? And he is not like it, it's very important for a player to be self aware, to know where, where you so made some made a misplay, when you should have been played playing better, and to when to improve, right? And I know that Powder is one of the players which has that quality and it's very important to know where uh, where should you learn and from what you should learn. Right? Yeah, you see a lot of players that actually, as soon as their game's over, they'll go back to the replay, whether they won or lost, and just go over the match and work mm -hmm. out what mm -hmm. they could have done better, was there anything that they could have changed or even altered about their overall lineup there. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a really good quality to have, I agree. Yeah. Also, like, another thing to mention is, like, he, he recently joined SK, and all the SK players are doing, like, so much better now, like, over the time. They're all practicing together, like... Um, scouting other people and preparing together and like um, two players from SK also qualified from Bucharest is like the only team where two players qualified from and both came pretty far like Freaky also got into top 16 and mm -hmm. it's no mm -hmm. big surprise actually yeah. that Powder that's a good point because people kind of undermine uh, teams in general yeah. in Harson, right? yeah yeah like it's behind the scenes like the preparation like you, nobody sees how much practice and preparation goes into a tournament like mm -hmm. how much people mm -hmm. prepare and then you also, like, the people that help you prepare don't get, like, any credit when someone yeah. does very uh, well in a tournament. Or really rarely, right? Yeah, yeah. very rarely. And so, uh, it's nice to point it out, like, from time to time. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw that your tweet about you you seeking out for a practice partner, right? You, uh, you wanna, is that, like... We can advertise like an it. offer? Is we that, like, an offer? <laughs> no, 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 I just wanted to advertise, you know, like, a matrimonial offer <laughs> here. <laughs> <Excuse me? laughs> on screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, when you have time, or you're really like, you want to join? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, but look at that. We're s already starting the semi-final, first semi-final of PGL Spring Tavern Tales between Moody and Powder. Yeah, and this match is actually becoming a, a sort of almost a staple matchup in this tournament of the uh, 
Not what looks to be Zulok versus Secret yeah, Paladin. Not just this tournament, it feels like it's like <laughs> 2016. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the staple matchup of Hearthstone yeah. or Star Pen. Um, and yeah, what, what do you think about uh, the two hands here, Gary? Uh, they're looking really... I Man, I don't like... It. This is like a very tough decision, actually. When you have the Egg and the Hunter Creeper, it's like two two drops. Like, when you keep both, like, it's kind of clunky. You, you don't expect to have a one drop if you keep both, and you don't have an activator for the Egg. Like, how do you play this hand out? Yeah. So he's actually deciding to just keep one, and I, I really, really like this uh, that decision. Would you have kept the Egg over the Creeper? Or? Um, it's like, when you keep the Egg, I think... Yeah, when you keep the hack, you just keep the hack. I think keeping both is fine. Mm. It's like you don't have an activator. Kinda like keeping the Hunter Creeper is obviously saver. Like mm -hmm. keeping the egg is a little greedy. You can just not get any activator. Yeah. And he's actually drawing to Dark Peddler though as well. So that's definitely one of the cards that can create him an activator yeah. in terms of Abusive Sergeant or uh, the Power Overwhelming, the, the two standard ones. When you think about it, there's so much cards that can activate the egg, right? So yeah. so many cards that can uh, activate the, the, the egg. So getting the Abusive Sergeant from the top of the deck, getting the PO, and then Dark Pedal creating one of those is yeah. still, still a factor, right? So maybe he values the egg so much that yeah. just getting the activator will s might just win yeah, him the game. It's like that matchup. Like Paladin is probably like the only deck that can. Usually Paladin doesn't run out, and then you know it's like the only deck that cannot own me with a uh, with a silence. Yeah, like an innovate keeper. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, my egg <laughs> is like useless. Hmm. Well. Now it's a different situation. You either play the egg now, you can um, bluff your opponent that you have an activator, right? And then go into a tin free drop with Dark Peddler into a minion or an activator for the egg, right? Yeah. Or you can go into the Dark Peddler route to see what is your discovery and then change your tactic for tin free if it's necessary, right? Because it might be a one drop into tap if you don't get any activator for the egg. An example. Yeah, yeah, but you have to play the egg because like the peddler is sort of a free drop as well. So mm -hmm. that would be like mm -hmm. really awkward curve. And the thing is as well, the peddler just straight up dies to the mini bot, whereas although you still have yeah. to deal with the divine shield later, like you just playing a minion and like they, yeah you can get a one drop, but then if you just play egg where you can't activate yeah. it in that same turn but anyway. So But it's really bad to play it like instantly when you play Zoo, then your opponent knows like that was my only play, right? Yeah. When you yeah. when you just drop it instantly. Or you're just so good with the zoo, you know what's the best play every single turn. It's like dog. Right? Dog plays always fast. Like even if he has like complicated <laughs> things, it's just zap, zap, zap. But it, it was important to play the egg now, because that prevented the knife juggler from being dropped down to the board, right? Because yeah. you, you can't really play knife juggler into an egg. If mm. that's an abusive surgeon, what do you do? Yeah, without getting any sort of instant yeah. value at least, there's really no point. Exactly. Um, and now the choice here for Moody is actually going to be uh, whether he goes Creeper and like, you know, like sort of floats the one mana or whether he goes Peddler into a one drop. Um, I don't I mind two, e either one to be honest, but I think like the Peddler is just nice because you can fill out the curve. If it's Voidwalker, it's not even that bad. Yeah. Oh, speaking, void walker. speaking of void walker. But yeah, the thing is, if you would have gotten like here a PO, you don't really want to use it this turn. Like you yeah. don't want a PO into the the divine shield. Then you take a minion instead of the yeah. PO. Yeah, but that will also feel bad, man. It's like the only activation. But you have for, for turn four, you need to play the implosion, right? You know that your opponent didn't play any consecration. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I like as well. Not it's like a knife juggler protection, right? To not proc the egg. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like it's true. Well, now the Masterful Battle might... Actually, it's not that good when I think about it. It's just better probably to play the Knife Jogger with Avenge yeah. to just kind of bluff your opponent. And the thing is as well, if you look at the potential Avenge targets, like the Knife Jogger is probably going to get killed just because it's the highest threat. But then if Avenge goes on the Divine Shield and Minibot, then things start getting a uh, little bit awkward. I really like, like games like these where both players draw well, you know? Mm -hmm. Where the decision matters. That usually, when do, when two aggro decks play against each other, like early game decks, then one guy just has like the nuts, and the other guy just draws poorly. But here, both players have like r even if the, like especially if the Maganis draw yeah. like insane hands. Do you still go for the uh, implosion? No, now change. <laughs> now <laughs> <you> <laughs> change. <laughs> I was like, I know implosion's good, but <laughs> <laughs> I like how Lotus said you will play turn four. Implosion for yeah. sure. There was, no demon. there was no demon <laughs> in the <laughs> hand, right? So of course you played it. <laughs> but if that don't go changing your mind now, Lothar. If that would be a Doom Guard instead of the Marganis, then you would change your mind to to play the uh, Voidwalker, right? It all depends what are you, what is 
currently in the hand and on the board because implosion after Mass of a Battle looks worse, right? Because your opponent, not because your opponent has multiple 1-1s, one just, just because your opponent has the Light's Justice, Yeah. right? Yeah, four mana Death Rattle Summon Magana sounds like a good card. Yeah, you have like um, two and a half Innervator. <laughs> I like to judge cards by saying how many Innervates they have, <laughs> you know? Definitely a good way. Uh, do you, I'm guessing you're really good at the quick uh, Emperor maths then. <laughs> yeah. It's not really that hard. No. <laughs> um, so actually, this is a pretty big pickup. The Keeper of Alderman's huge. Um, it's whether Powder's going to choose to make that play and know he can at least reduce down whatever minion comes out. So whether it be a Doom Guard mm -hmm. uh, or, the, you know, the, or the Malganis. Um, but Keeper of Alderman is definitely a good yeah, answer. He, sick. he could choose to ignore it but even like the the knife juggler into like avenge or knife juggler hero power i don't think does quite enough yeah those two minions from the warlock are like the two worst minions to actually like trade in and clear you always want to clear the bot from the zoo but white collar and egg are like yeah. really the two exceptions smork is the the play yeah this is really interesting he decided to just go really aggressive he has the follow-up of sludge belcher uh, and or lothab um, so e either one on turn five if he wants to, or even juggle a hero power and avenge to keep the board stacked up. Yeah, that was like a really risky play, right? Yes, that was a really risky play, but now look at that. What do you think about oh. <laughs> Flame Imp? Attack into the 3-3 three three with your Void Caller, implosion your own Void Caller. Because you just saw one Keeper of Ultiman. You get a full board, Malgan is out, you kill one of the 3-3s three three on, the, on the board of your opponent, and yeah. you gain like two to... Four minions that will be uh, free, free, and your flamen will be. Ah, I don't like that. Yeah, as you said, like what really speaks for that play is that he just saw the keeper. Yeah. It's like keeper is the yeah. answer for the Malganis, and, and he just saw it. And also, although all the damage is there to kill Malganis, regardless, I think. Yeah. Um, the uh, it requires weapon, right? So there's like with all that, there's additional nine damage plus all the imps. One thing that I didn't like about the implosion being played like in this fashion is the fact that if you go for a free damage from the implosion and you have a minion already on board that doesn't die from the trade, yeah. uh, should it go in a r you should pick the risky situation yeah. when yeah, you yeah. go for the kill with the implosion with four, right? Because then you have a good situation anyway, and if your opponent trades with the Void Caller because it's on one HP, then he gets wrecked by the free free imps, right? Yeah. And now you, 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 you are not banking on that Mulganis value. Yeah, because now Malganis yeah. is really just a 9-7 in the Yeah, it's like, right? After yeah, the well, like God. Oh, never mind. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> that's oh, wow. That's, that's like such a good draw. Yeah, that's, <laughs> actually, <laughs> that's actually just insane. Let's take a moment and just appreciate <laughs> this draw, man. That was the nice. Wow. Like, I, I, just so I don't know what to say. It's like the, the whole game it will be turned around just by the second implosion right the, now. Yeah. And you win the Void Caller in first, right? Yes. That's the Uber Nuts. I suppose it doesn't matter because the Void Caller dies and then um, it replaces itself with Malganis. Malganis won't, like, not come out because the board's full, right? Uh, well, does it matter? No, yeah. it doesn't, yeah. Hello, sir. What do you do? And Powder's shaking his hand, saying to his Keeper of Ultiman, GET OVER HERE! Back to <laughs> the hand, right? If only. If only. He needs a panda. Or Shadow Step. <laughs> He needs a shadow step mm. in that pile bin. I, I I think the tapping was there not too bad, right? You don't take damage and creeper just like fills up your board even more. You cannot play anything in next turn. You have the yep. boom. Agree. And I mean you get it for free, right? And like having a PO now would be really sweet. I agree here. But tapping probably yeah. would Or Argus, be like you need like Argus would be like game winning. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. This is Kinda terrible. Oh, though. <laughs> <laughs> there's like, there's not even really. I mean, uh, what do you have to get perfect juggles for this? Is that's, it? Just like, that's like a Bible time play right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he <laughs> almost <laughs> killed the imp. Right? Those were good, nice. <laughs> yeah, he can kill an imp. That's like best, the best oh my case. God. He tried to kill the Malganis. Like, what? The, what was the extra chance, man? Three pings into the Malganis. Very, very small is my maths on, that's, the, on, that's on the chance of that. I'm not trying to work out percentages there. So if you. Get a Doomguard now from the top of the deck. Do you favor Doomguard instead of Dr. Boom? That's yes. Well, it has 7-9 stats instead of 5-7. And it right? can charge, and you don't care about the Boom bots at the moment, because you've got all uh, the imps. But it's turn 7 Dr. Boom, man. You don't oh, P.O. That would have been already in hand. I would just Wouldn't like change a thing. Okay, I never mind. I would <laughs> just <laughs> it would change nothing. I would just... 
say, well done, Imps, you did a good job, and, and now wreck suicide those them. People. Yeah, suicide those Imps and play the Doctor Swag and win the game. Sounds like a good idea to me. It's Winning the game seven. is normally the correct play, yeah. You have seven mana in one card in hand. Well, two. Two, but... But the other one is insignificant. Yeah, it's only one, one card in hand, as I said. Huh. Oh. Sick <laughs> juggle. <laughs> <laughs> what were the odds on that juggle killing him? Well, that was like one to seven. That was interesting. Well, you still gain three minions on the board, so and nine damage to the face. <laughs> I like the way you're trying to justify this in a negative yeah, way. Like, like, well, you still gain Doctor Boom as well as Malganis still being on the board. I just egg. don't see any way out of yeah, this. Yeah, you don't want to jinx it, right? <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. pretty over. But what I really like about it, like he had a decision, like he decided to play the Keeper of Ulduman, right, for Smork, even mm -hmm. though he saw the White Collar, and yeah. that was basically yeah, yeah, game yeah. losing. Yeah, yeah I, I'm really surprised by th by that fact because usually when I see Powder's games, he's like very aggressive, but he knows when to switch, right? When to yep. switch, when to have that fail safe card. In this case, Keeper of Ulduman, because home, you know that your opponent is playing Malganis, is playing double Doom Guards, and if he gets a Doom Guard from the Void Core, it doesn't look good anyway. Like yeah. that's a 5-7 minion. Yeah. So smoking with Paladin when your opponent can take the initiative back by just playing a huge minion that will trade with your Keeper of Ulduman and will not die. Also, uh, here we can see, like, uh, it was also too early in the game. The opponent is at 27 life. Yeah. yeah. Like if you put him to, like, 10 or something, then, yeah. like, yeah. You're not Hunter that you can do that. Yeah. And because Hunter ex excels yeah. at, at not even Hunter. power, right? And he has no Kings in hand, no True Super Champion in hand. He was clearly expecting the Flame Imp out of the uh, Void Caller. Or Imp Gang Boss? <laughs> yeah. To, to be okay. safe. But that was Justified. Uh, yeah. Overruled. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was wrong. Um, yeah, that was definitely rough. It seems like a, a really strange decision, as you said, Garo, because it wasn't pushing anything close to lethal the next turn. And uh, and yeah, just being able to actually just lock down any minion that came out after that was, was really strange to miss the opportunity. Yep. 1-0 for Moody right now. Powder has its secret paladin eliminated. And he needs to win with his um, Reno Warlock Demon Lock version, <laughs> right? That's the Demon one. Demon Reno. Demon Reno Jackson. Uh, Warlock, or on his back of um, his patron warrior, right? Yep. Those two decks are being left for him. So or he changed because he changed. No, 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 no. You know, you can't change for the last oh. day. Like you play with the whole lineup the whole day. Okay, so oh, that's, that's fair. Yeah, because you know. Yeah, makes sense, right? <laughs> Say sort yes. of. Y say yes. Just, just agree. I agree. See, I agree. it works. So, so what deck do you think he's got to lock in next? The uh, the Demon Reno or the Patron Mario? For sure, Reno, right? Uh, by looks things. I, th I think that the Patron is like way closer to like a 50-50 than actually Reno Lock. Reno Lock because you rely favorite. on the weapons, right? And when you play Reno Jackson Warlock, you have Hellfire, Shadow Flame, Demon Wrath helping too. Yeah. And Boltons, even Twisted Nether. Boltons. Yeah. And that's still a, a, a threat. And you have minions too. You yeah. have Zombie Child. And a lot you of heal. Gang boss. Right. You have no, that was a Farseer, right? There's no Farseer, but there's Healbot and Reno Jackson. Wait, is there a Farseer? Nope. Who was playing Farseer? Oh, that was last game. Yep. Never mind. That was Arnie. Yeah. Yeah, but on uh, looking on Moody's side, he's got a pretty okay opening himself. Like double limp gang boss, like not the most like impactful card against Reno Lock. <laughs> Uh, but Ooh. definitely, you know, just a good curve overall. What a draw from Powder. Then playing like Reno and going first and having the zombie char. That's like the greatest feeling in the world. <laughs> of course, that's that's like perfect scenario too. But what I like about having Reno Jackson in the opening hand is that you know, okay, I can be aggressive m with my life yep. total. I don't have to be worried about being over uh, like over extending with spells because I, c I have the reset button right and I can just play it on turn six and say do it again bro yeah and even the implosion pickup now for that first draw is really nice and um, it's just gonna help battle the board a little bit versus the zoo so now we'll see that uh, Moody will pick the left immigrant boss for like half a second think about it to play it on turn one and then Paldro just uh, just lean over and go I know what you do mate it's fine <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, Yes, of course, he's picking up the coin. Ah, see? See? <laughs> Lothar, you know this strategy. I know this would the not bluff, work man. against you, clearly. Yeah. 
This is not our, th those are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> Demons, sorry. So, feeding a 2-drop into the zombie chow or a 1-drop, hmm, that's a tough decision <laughs> right there. <laughs> this, is, this is not even like, he knows what he's doing straight. Oh. <laughs> so I was about to stop in a bit of shock then if he was going to coin out the... Uh, okay, so what are the button. options when you play Zoo? If you see a zombie chow, there's nothing else apart from the flame that you want to play into yeah. it, right? There's I, I, nothing I else. I think this is actually pretty useless, but because... You, you can't bluff this situation. Yeah, because what would... Yeah, there's no 2-drop you would play into a zombie chow. Only in the egg, and you would yeah. not play a flame imp if you have an egg in, in hand, because you always play the egg if that situation yeah. occurs, right? And you yeah, still need like PO, right? Yeah, you don't well, want to PO so a zombie chow as well. Yeah, that's the, for the egg to actually do anything versus the chow, you'd still even need the power of alarming. So, um, just a uh, you know loses the flame imp. The zombie chow does not the most amount of work I've seen a zombie chow do, but locking uh, out the flame imp early on is pretty good. Suddenly the sand got terrific. <laughs> he was so much the damage. Fight. He will top like a void color next time. So much damage, man. Do you think the zoo's hands better than powders at the moment? No, it sucks. No, no, yeah, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> I was gonna say. But one white color changes the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It's it's like with Druid, right? It's like uh, when when Amnesia is streaming, like when you have all the five drops in starting hand, no white growth innovate. As soon as you draw innovate, the hand is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because then you can cure foul. <laughs> yeah, right? and you even have an Azure Drake to get the living roots no. to have. Do not flow the mana yeah. at some point, right? And it's the same scenario. The right now, the hand is horrible, but as soon as he draws a Void Caller on 4, it's perfect. Yeah, or even on 3. Yeah. Because you can just drop the Void Caller. You know that your opponent is not keen on popping them, right? Because yeah. we have we have seen that procedure last yeah, game. Yeah, that, that's just happened, you can, yeah. You, you can see that from your opponent that he, he usually doesn't want to pop the Void Caller, so he will probably not pop it again and just let it be. Yeah. Right? Especially when you play a deck when you can have a silence and you can have some form of mind control tech. Yeah. Right? So th there's a way of taking the advantage of of the of the fight color not being popped. I like that by the way. Yeah, it's something uh, I was actually discussing with Paladin before the game, and uh, it just randomly came up about what, what was in his deck, and he was like, yeah, Brand's good because sometimes you can get the crazy combos off, but also sometimes on three versus an aggressive deck. It's also pretty good. <laughs> it just soaks the damage. Yeah, because it just does the job. When, you've, when your opponent thinks about what can happen after someone has a, uh, a brand on board, it's like, well, I don't want to give him a full value ar defend of Argus. Also, like, if you really, really play co uh, paid close attention, I think Moody kept, like, all cards, and he just coined out one of the cards he kept, like, a free drop. And what would he play like afterwards if he coins out a gang boss? It's very likely it's like another gang boss. So the brand would survive. It's mm -hmm. like a very good chance that the brand here survives and not just gets uh, yeah. traded by the NPC yeah. surgeon. Because there's no way you can now play a Pilot Trader, which is the mortal enemy of brand, right? Multiple end gang bosses. Hmm. He could no MC tech. Yeah. Uh, no, not really, because brand dies. <laughs> I'd lose like Bram, but yeah, he could but steal a gang boss. Yeah, it's like 50 50 on a 2 2 gang boss. Is it worth it? Or no, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, uh, it kind of sucks. Is there any reason to trade in an Alpha right. here? Just uh, I think you just play Defender of Argus and yeah. kill the 2 4 minion. It kind of feels a little bad, man, but it's okay. But you build board yeah. presence. It's, it's, all right. it's, it's like a Hunt Master when you think about it. Kinda. With a twist. Yes. <laughs> Hunt Master with a twist. It's like poor, master. poor man's hound master. <laughs> Imagine if there would be a hound master for demons. No. <laughs> that would be scary. Yep. I don't want to imagine that. There might be with the expansion because like white color will be gone and stuff like that. So. Oh right, white color will so be gone. So you might need a uh, hound master for demons. Like you're joking here about it, and the next <laughs> expansion, oh, like Blizzard is watching. Demon like, master. Damn, that's, <laughs> a, like, oh, that's okay. a good. <laughs> that's a good idea, man. And uh, <laughs> next week I get a royalty check. <laughs> <laughs> Every time the card is played. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta take notes, man. I I'm sure that Dota is paying attention right now because they like to uh, crowdfund salaries for casters in house streams. And hosts, sorry. <laughs> That's another okay. way, you know? That's <laughs> yeah, another way yeah, to yeah. do that. I was wondering where you were going to go with that joke. <laughs> <laughs> this is... That's not a good MC Tech board. No, it's not. Except you're, you're a really good MC Tech player. But <laughs> you have an implosion which uh, Do you get nice. the juggle if you steal the juggler? Probably, right? Yes, you do. 
That's good. That's a good play. You steal the juggler and, and juggler name down. No, but and why would you go for the 25% well when you have the explosion for 100%? I don't know though, because the thing 100%. is, if, if you miss, you can still dart bomb the juggler, right? Yeah, you always steal the juggler, right? See, I would have preferred holding on to dart bomb there, because then you keep hold the board and only leave two tokens. Why, why are you talking about dart bomb? I'm just talking about implosion. <laughs> yeah, implosion would be the best play there, for sure. I agree. No, I think you risk <laughs> no, it. No, you I risk agree. the juggler. Like, you took... <laughs> After seeing the imp steal, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a terrible oh play. God. That was a terrible play. Why don't you implosion for four instead? <laughs> Even for two is better. You kill still one of the imps and you have four, four is Never better, mind. man. What are you talking about? Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> don't want to be behind on board. Oh man, this hand is like. Ugh. You want to give up on the life right now? Well, the defender Valga is not that horrible. You can kill on. You can kill your opponent's imp, which was your imp, so it's a traitor! Wow. Give me the stick! Kill it. <laughs> Do you get the Star Wars reference? No. Ah. You didn't see the new Star Wars? No. Oh my god. Are you spoiling right now? No spoilers. Uh, Are wow. you like the worst caster? <laughs> <on Europe>? <laughs> <laughs> well, that went from, were you spoiling this, to just an insult. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Okay. Do you like that? Being aggressive when you usually trade in Dude, such situations? His hand is kind of aggressive, right, in a sense. Like, this is basically... Man, he's in such a bad spot, I don't even know. Like, at this point, you should be finishing the game in the next two turns against Reno Lock, and he's behind on board where he and was. And this molten Reno, molten <laughs> yeah, heal ball, like, whatever he wants. Nothing is gone. Like, yeah, the opponent hasn't used any of those, like, key cards. Still got Hellfire, worst yeah, case scenario. Hellfire, like. Shadow Flame, Heal, Bot, Reno, Molt, everything is still in the deck, and he's behind on board. And the opponent has 19 life. That's like so bad. Like then, I wouldn't even know. And then even now, like you start to think, is like tap egg even like remotely worth it? Do you just have to play a doom guard to put some thunder board and put some yeah. pressure on? Like, and then if if you do play the doom guard, then you, you have to be you, so on, so on. Yeah. In a in a lot in some matchups, it's actually right to just slam down the the, the doom guard. It's like against a rogue and freeze mage, oftentimes. I think with this hand in this yeah, position, yeah. like you don't really have much choice. Like egg does nothing here. But if he discards the Doctor Boom, he's like in yeah. even worse. I, I just lost. I, imagine if he plays the Doom Guard and lo loses the second Doom Guard and the Doctor Boom. Yeah. Yep. It's like uh, he has to. So yes, negative. I, I guess I lose. So negative. Nice. You throw the any two cards that aren't those two cards, and then you win. It's if fine. He, if he would have gotten a Void Caller there, that would be decent, right? It's like not hor horrible. <laughs> How much value does the Void Caller hold? A lot, I would say. Lot, it's yeah. like a bag. Unlimited. It's the best value. card in the game, in theory, right? On paper. White Collar, if you have the right cards in hand. Like, nothing has more value than a freaking White Collar. Well, I would say, I would argue that if you count the factor of having cards in your hand, then Mad Scientist is better because you have it in your deck. So there's. Yeah, but what you get into play is, like, so much better. Yeah, of course. If you transition everything into mana, then what. Into innovates, into innovates. Let's stick to one, one currency. Innovate, then that's just <laughs> so many innovates. Oh, so many good choices. Yeah, just going with the most straightforward one there. You just, <laughs> just drop Emperor, get all your good cards even cheaper. Uh, even a one mana owl is actually pretty important um, mm. if it comes to it because it's just even easier to squeeze into the uh, the Reno Lux curve. And he has the deadliest Reno combo in hand that exists the Molten Giant Reno. It's like. It's like just breaks. <laughs> just and, breaks and, and a Sun Fury Protector on top. It just breaks decks, man. Feels bad, man. My deck is broken. And it's like <laughs> in half. And, and he drew a lower tip. Hey, this is just so so sad. I like how to use the A. It's so German. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> this is so sad. Like he, like he has to play Doomguard 1-7 to kill an Emperor that already got value. It's so sad. It's turn seven. I think you just active, ignore the, the Emperor and just play Dr. Boom. Yeah, against the real lock. That sounds like a great idea. But what? <laughs> how do you want to do it in the game otherwise? I don't know, man. I'm not optimistic anymore. <laughs> I cannot see it. I cannot see it. I hope it... Like, what are the worst six cards you could have? Um, Mortal I, Coil? Some, uh, yeah. And you can only have one of them. Like, one Mortal <laughs> Coil. One uh, um. twisting nether because he's behind on board. 
Yeah, this is really rough. When you get this far into a game versus Reno Lock, <laughs> and they've not played any heals yet, yeah. you know, you just, just but really start clears. to think. Everybody yeah, yeah, <laughs> they've not played anything yet. <laughs> yeah. They've literally just played Emperor and a couple of cards that don't matter anymore. Every taunt is left, except the Argus. Every board clear is left, yeah. every heal is left. He's going to trade away the whole board here. I feel like he only Hellfire. used the brand. Yeah, he just played brannies in this position in the game. That was it. That this kind of play actually tells you, okay, I have Reno Jackson right in hand, I don't care. Yeah, I'll take the damage, yeah. Go. Oh. And he can just slam Mullen. Well, that Whoa. sounds perfect. And, he and heal bar. <laughs> that oh, Reno's reduced. Never mind. I forgot Reno was on five. It's like, yeah. never oh mind, God. heal bot. I have this guy. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds better. Plus 20 sounds better than plus eight. The value, man. How much mana is that? <laughs> My God, how many interfaces is that? That's a lot. Like 20 heal, like that's a lot. Like Okay, so healing touch healing is touch, yeah. one and a half innovate, right? Please, can yeah. we not turn this <laughs> into a Hearthstone disc like currency discussion of innovates? So it's uh three three and a half innovate. That's a, that sounds like a lot of innovates. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then that's just game. Yes. Yeah, Lothar wouldn't have done anything. There was uh, a lot of damage on board, and uh, the you can say that Reno Jackson pooped on the board, and uh, your opponent got away. <laughs> Get away, just fled, fled the fled the game. I mean, that happens a lot when you play against some aggro decks, right? If you can actually just play Reno and and not be dead the next turn, then it's uh, you can just win because the aggro normally just runs out of uh, runs out of damage, and even two Doom Guards there wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. And there's the guy who beat you in the show oh match. Oh my god, he's back, and he. He destroyed he, you. Yeah, he denied the, the handshake too. Oof. After the game. Before the game, we handshaked, but then it was like. He, He's he too good silent. for you. Silent. Silent the whole game. I, I don't get it. It's scary though, isn't it? Just those eyes staring over you. Yeah, there you go. That was a really <laughs> good impression. He just he humiliated you. Like, he even like threw one game <laughs> with Divine <laughs> Favor. Still won. I was, I was not fast enough. My APM was not on spot to did, did you fully actually, concede. Did you, you actually know? catch that he discarded Angry Chicken? Yeah, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I just burned an Angry Chicken. <laughs> what, what's happening? Is he playing that with Avenge? To, you know, just punish uh, yeah. people? Oh, it's it's one of the few cards that you'd probably rather him have it in his deck than burn it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Just so we yeah. could draw it. It's yeah, like, like <laughs> it's like NA Dex Elegigo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the reference doesn't get like old and it's in every game, you know? Yeah, in 2016 even. Yeah, in Counter Strike 2, in Heroes of the Storm, I think too, I'm not sure. But I think too. I would say it, in Heroes of the Storm, it's too. Look at those plays, man. You're missing out on those plays. Bam, Ooh, bam, bam. Exactly. It's perfect. Ac actually. It could have been five damage, and he would still able to pull it off because the molten giant was discounted by the emperor. Oh yeah, because it would have been minus one. Yeah, yeah. that was that a, was a cool game. feature. I really like those re replays. I don't know about you, Kara. I like them. I I'm enjoying them every, every time. And when when the casters are talking, I'm like just looking at this amazing replay. I'm like, oh, damn, son. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Damn. damn. That's how you say it. Damn. Right. Someone muted Kara. So it's um, what's the score? That's one it's one. It's one right? one. One one. He countered uh, Zubi Freno. Which camera's on? This one. One one. <laughs> uh, between Moody and Powder. This is the first semi-final of PGN Spring Tavern Tales, and now we'll be going into the game number three between those players. G um, Powder needs to stick to the Reno Jackson Warlock, right? While Moody has to switch, and he has a what is left? I think he ha did. He have Druid. I think. S that was a secret uh, paladin, right? Yeah. It's Moody. Yes, he has a druid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a druid. Since 2014, he plays druid. Everyone plays druid since 2014. Yeah. There we go. He did have druid and paladin. Actually, since 2013, but that was like a really close beta. Yep. Everyone played druid there as well. <laughs> I don't know. I like. I had no alpha key. What? <laughs> Feels bad. <man. laughs> I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't get one. I didn't win one. I I, I made. Um, I got it. I got the better key for my friend for free. Oh, I joined so many giveaways, man. I never won. Like I think Crypt and Trump did some giveaways like two years ago, man. And never lucky. And you sit here on the classic couch instead of playing. Mm. You can yeah, see that. That's that's like uh, downhill from there, man. Yeah. Downhill from there. You won the first Bucharest, no one remembers that yeah, anyway. Lucky. Yeah. Luck. Yeah. 
on a lock. Yeah. Yeah. And Sometimes Rain, lucky. Reynolds picks you up and he's, and he's like, yeah, he's like, luck. damn, this guy is on a, like, he's lucky right now. So, <laughs> right now, not bad. Not bad. Pick. I'm gonna sign him right now. Yeah, right now. And then when he gets unlucky, then. But you, you got the Dihuri right now. Yeah, so it's pretty comfy, man. It's super comfy. But that should tell you that you're not being cut from the team because you have no, the Dihuri. Not cut. Yeah. So like maybe just when I get unlucky, like right now I'm like still like in the. Nobody's sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go into the match. Moody dis uh, mulliganed his whole hand to get the innervates and wild groves, but he didn't hit on it. He has a half of an innervate in his hand, though. Yeah, how do you think this matchup actually goes with the uh, the druid versus this kind of Reno luck? I think you're like heavily favored, but usually uh, most people cut the shades completely. And I think like uh, also against handlock, shade was like a really crucial card that really uh, gets your head because yep. you play it early, and w once it's out of the hellfire range, it's like almost indestructible unless someone m shadow flames the giant, right? Yeah, and it's your ultimate win condition. But Reno has like only one giant, so and you can play around it, the the giant. Um, Shadow Flame combo, so... Yeah, there's, but th there's definitely abilities, though, for, like, a uh, Power of Whelm and our abusive Sergeant Shadow Flame to be able to just buff it up a little bit more. But, yeah, it's definitely more difficult with only playing one Giant, right? Oh, but also, uh, as I said, against the Patron, like, your Dru Druid really relies on those, like, cheat cheat uh, plays with Innovate and Wild Growth to get the early damage in. It's mostly because of the damage. People usually end up, like, removing the stuff you Innovated out, like a, like a Shredder, whatever. But you did so much pressure with it that you finish your opponent with the combo. Oh, look at that. Suddenly the hand is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly an innervate. Out of nowhere. Okay, so now we can plan. Do you want to play Druid of the Claudestin? Just Azure Drake to... I, I mean, I don't know his deck. If he's playing Shades, there's some merit to just play the Azure Drake right now. Because it's out of range of, like, removal from Reno Jackson anyway. Right? You're not, you're not gaining uh, anything from the spell power yet. Because there's no wrath in your hand, there's no threat on the open board, but you gain that core draw. But on the other hand, you can also just play Druid of the Claw and bank on that high HP instead. But then your hand kind of sucks for the next for no two turns if you don't, if you are not top decking anything relevant, right? Yeah, it's definitely kind of rough. Um, it's how afraid he, he really is. I mean, we can see it there with the, uh, the Twilight Drake in hand. It's like, how, how much do you think that's realistically going to come out? So he's actually looking at so maybe going for the play where it's hold on to either the coin or the innovate or both to get out Dr. Boom really early. So he goes for the play that innovate next turn to get a 5 drop out and then coin on turn 4 to get another 5 drop out, right? But is that better when you know that you, you have to be the aggressor in this matchup? So like the Azure Drake would have been awesome against every single minion that your opponent plays? Yeah, it's definitely a tough one. It's like, um, maybe he's just thinking he's going to go to the late game because until now he didn't see any of the combo pieces. Um, so there's no chance of him just getting the quick pressure and then burst down. I don't um, know, man. It, it's, it's a tough one, though. He, he does have like BGH and, and Dr. Boom as well for that late game. So maybe he doesn't want to try and rush it too much because he didn't have like something like a Savage Raw or even like swipes or anything like yeah, that yeah. to push some extra damage. No, it was very important to just make your hand as least awkward as possible. You cannot expect to to like draw another innovate or something like that. You, you really have to value your coin here. And right now, it like he really wants to get the Doctor Boom out, but it's like I I really just see the Druid of the Claw being like a great play here. Well, because you get another five drop out next turn and you draw like two cards. Yeah, and the only thing with the uh, the Druid of the Claw as well is is that if, you know, the only thing it's really challenged by is the Dimp Gang Boss with a Power Overwhelming, yes. but you're actually okay with that because then there's yeah. only one token spawned and the Power Overwhelming. Wait, wait, wait. Is the P PO even in the, in the deck? In I think the it'll still Jackson? play. It could still play one, just as a PO, right? Yeah, but we haven't seen it, so maybe not. I'm not sure yeah. about it, you know? Because yeah, it might, it might not play any. I yeah, um, probably would bank on a Abusive Sergeant more likely because you, yeah, you yeah, play true. a Beacon Hunter, right? So you can combo that out. But but it doesn't matter. It contests the uh, Im Gang boss perfectly, and it protects your minions, and you have the Savage Row in hand. So according to his hand, it was like the best play for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and oh, like now you want to protect your board even more. Yes. So if you do that, but uh, yeah, the coining out the Drake is just very juicy. Don't want to <sighs> power. Yeah, you you have to draw. Well, Savage Row translates now to three mana, eight damage. Sounds okay. 
right? But you're facing a deck that is capable of just healing everything that you did by paying six mana yeah. and gaining a body on the board, right? So it's usually if you would play against a deck that doesn't have that cap uh, that ability, you would just probably just go the seven roar bang on the damage because you don't need even the force of nature to do what you usually do want to do with the force of nature right um the problem is that the opponent also has sweepers in his deck so if you just leave just build up the board overextend with the azure drake then you're like leaving it to chance that your opponent has no way of dealing with that i don't like trading to be honest i don't know like th this just resets the board on the same position where in gang boss doesn't really do anything against druid of the claw um, he can play as your Drake next turn, then coin into Boom the turn after. And uh, like you said, there's the sweepers. And if he went all face, and then in a turn or so, like just Reno just comes down, then it's it's going to be a real issue because he's just sort of burnt Savage Draw to force mm -hmm. out a Reno, mm -hmm. which isn't that bad for the Warlock. I, I actually like it. I, I I've seen so many people just overvaluing the the Savage Draw. Like it was a great place to utilize it as a removal card, and I think it was fine because he has a second Savage. So draw. you'd rather go to the for the trade than for the face damage. I, I would have because of the Reno Jackson looming in the hand. Why maybe? I would have probably coined out the Azure Drake, and um, cleared the gang boss and traded one imp in to play around MC Tech. It was mm -hmm. a strong board, and it can only be cleared with Shadow Flame. And yeah, you draw a card. He had the Shredder, it's a nice play. But I understand why he did it, like he got very good value out of the Imps and good value out of the Savage Roar. Not so great value out of the Savage Roar actually, mm -hmm. but he got 6 damage to the face, which is always good. And he killed a uh, 4-7 Drake. The problem is that Moody is like, when you... It's I'm, I'm sure that Powder was watching his previous games, at least the, the last one. And uh, he did see that Moody is over trading almost every single time. Yeah. So he might also change his way of playing but just by playing sticky minions that require to trade. And but they're uh, like as you can see here, he's actually you know, like the pl uh, player really lead it into a perfect s uh, situation. He he had like the Azure Drake now as a turn five play, and he had like two draws to find a seven. Like seven he had the Doctor yeah, yeah. Boom as yeah. well for for turn six. Like he fought three turns ahead, and uh, it looks really great for him. I, I really like how he, how he played it. Like he's pushing damage, it's not like he's like now trading. But he would have been pushing damage if he would just, <laughs> uh, if yeah. he would have just innervate the Azure Drake or Droid of the Claw on turn two, right? Because that translates to like eight damage. Yeah. Right. So the but damage if he loses the board, he cannot push with Savage Roar, right? I, because then he's ignoring the opponent's board. Yeah. Mm, well, you need to do something about the Azure Drake or just play Rian Jackson this turn. You yeah. you can't really play, I think, the, the Emperor, right? Because you're... If your opponent... To be honest, at 6 mana... Yeah, usually the Druid ramps up, right? But 6 mana, what can you do? And you've but seen he has the coin. But you've oh. seen so there's an option well. of Swipe and Savage Roar. And that's 9, that's 12... Uh, how much damage is that? No. That's 4 and 9, 13 damage. It's exactly yeah. lethal. What do you mean, Swipe, Savage Roar, that's 8 mana? It's seven, it's seven mana. Seven mana. Seven yeah, mana. Yeah, yeah. yeah seven he, mana. He has the coin, so yeah, that would have been there. lethal. Do you play around that? Hmm. Well, you saw one Savage Roar, and he was yeah. trading instead of going face. So you might count. You might think that he's not having ha burst having damage. the burst damage, right? Because he was trading with the Savage Roar instead of going face. Yeah. And he doesn't want to play Reno before Molten. That feels so bad, man. Like it's probably. Yeah, of course. You have to like play greedy at that point. Like, when will he be able to play Molten ever? After the Reno. But you can win with other means. You you are not banking this deck I'm solely on the Molten Giant. I think you need it, 100%. This is such a bad matchup. Like, I played it so many times. You Like, that's also against Mitra Enchanter and a lot of other decks. Like, you don't have a lot of big friends. Um, I don't know. He, he didn't play few against Dalek, right? No, he doesn't. He has yeah, he very, he very demons, few yeah. threats. Actual threats. Okay, I, I, think I, I thought you said friends. I was like... <laughs> he has very, <laughs> he has very few, few friends. Um, Big friends, even. I think this play was this play was okay with the emperor because, yeah. like, other than that one co yeah. combination of cards, second savage. Yeah, right? yeah. Then then you're feeling okay. Yeah. So uh, I think this was okay, and it gains a lot. And now it's sort of it's kind of paid off where the the doctor boom's been played, and he's had to sort of ignore emperor, which is kind of good. Um, and now he can get a really Ooh, good reno. That's a big friend. <laughs> that is. And it will be for eight mana if you're not sacrificing your emperor. Man, if uh, man, that's do you think you need to sacrifice Emperor? Uh, depends, I, on depends on the boom. Yeah, 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 true. 
It all depends now where the bomb will hit. If it hits the Emperor, then you can't trade for Asher Drake. Do you want to hit it for fa to face for four? Because you, you will heal anyway. And it goes in the wrong way. Oh my oh, god. Maybe you attack the boom bot now. Like before Reno. Just to so soak up the damage. Might go face. Oh. Hmm. Uh, okay, that's weird. Hmm. From the. I think. Volok just benefits the most from the Reno. Like living from our classes. Yeah, I think well, it's. Of course, because of the hero power, right? Yeah. And the thing but is, as well, like. If he'd left it on the board, it's still got four health, so it doesn't necessarily die to the boom bot. And then, well, Dr. Boom kind of has to deal with this 8-8 potentially, or the Reno, so if he left it open there, it would force the trade the other way, I think. But now he has the BGH. It's like when one player has the BGH and the other player doesn't. Mm -hmm. Both play like a big minion. That's such a but tempo I'm swing. still thinking about the play when, you, when he could have attacked with the Emperor to the bomb, yeah. and then play the Reno Jackson and Molten Giant, right? Because the bomb could have hit face. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Like, first you look what the Boomba does, uh, does, right? It hit the Emperor for one. So mm -hmm. then you can hit the other Boomba, you have a good chance. But first play the Molten, I think, just to split damage. You want to split damage just because of the threat of the Big Game Hunter? No, the, the yeah. Also that the Emperor survives, that you get value out of the Emperor. Mm -hmm. if it goes because you have Malganus for, for eight mana. Yeah, that's right? great. And you have a six mana clean board, right, for, with the Twisting Nether, that's also important. Yeah, no, it's super... Oh, oh no. look at that. <laughs> he could also just Twisting Nether. I would probably just Twisting Nether here. Maybe trade into the Shredder yeah, first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Clear all that garbage. It's really interesting there, where, like, there was no reason whatsoever for the Druid to really trade into Reno, because after seeing Reno, you can then, like, turn on the, you know, the aggression. But some situations when Druid is holding, like, four cards, sometimes they just have like wild growth and innovate pieces, like in swipe, something yeah. like that, mm -hmm. removals. Mm -hmm. But you just, then when he sees the Lord, then it's like it feels bad. Man, when he well, you know that he doesn't have a swipe because he would have won the game. Yeah. But, uh, uh, he could have just drawn it last turn, two turns. Okay, yeah. He had one draw. Yeah. Or Keeper. He, he so keeper is also something. Keep. But in this situation, like, imagine if that uh, twist in there would have been for six mana and he could have built up the board afterwards, right? I don't really understand because now his uh, Reno can die yeah. in the boom bot. Oh, it didn't die though, as the bot oh hits my God, uh, that was close. two damage. That was a close one, actually. A very close one. The, I don't think the. Uh, he has the boom bot, uh, like the dark bomb, but uh, do you have to take the risk? I don't know. Maybe he thinks he has to take the risk at that point. Angry He's chicken. Th that was a shaky round. You could have, If you are planning to play the, de the peddler, you should have played it f no. after the hellfire, n before. The big game hunter because it and before trading because it could have been an example. Uh, what was that? Two three minion? No, it wouldn't change anything. No, no, never mind. It didn't change a thing. <laughs> I take it all back. Yeah, I t I'm taking it back. Sometimes wrong. Sometimes even casters are wrong. Yeah, yeah, that happens really rarely. <laughs> but if the boombot would have killed the Reno. It would have been horrible. He would be in it, and the Shredder would be like Zapomatic. Uh, but he had a Dark Bomb, so it was fine, I guess, from his perspective. He was thinking, okay, if something terrible comes out, I just have my Dark Bomb. Yep, so Moody knows that uh, Powder's not running uh, you know, the, the burst combo variant of this Warlock, so he's probably feeling okay, at least at the moment, on 24 health. Uh, do you think you. Uh, oh, okay, he's got the Druid of the Clown Taunt, that's interesting. I don't know whether this is just going to soak up the board then. I didn't know if you wanted to Ancient of Law to try and push into these combo pieces a bit quicker. But Moody should know that he's not running the, com uh, the combo version, right? Yeah, he, he just will know. He yeah. watched the game. Yeah, right? yeah, he'll know. 100%. Hmm. Because now this, this sort of just gives your opponent more time to develop more minions. Um, hmm. gotcha. could Do you also actually just slam the Dread Infernal here? Oh. And Coil? Oh, I see. I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, and then MC Tech. Just want to play stuff against Druid. Yeah. Can't normally clear, like, especially, like, you know, wave after wave of minions as well. Like, they can maybe get one or two decent clears off, but they just can't keep it up. And this 6-6 six, six is going to be a, a bit of a problem to deal with. There's one problem, though. You are getting really low and you have no more heals. Apart from Siphon Soul. Right? Yes. Did he play the healbot? No. Oh no, he played the healbot. He had the healbot last game, right? So he still yeah. got healbot. Oh, okay. And but and but also he doesn't have it in hand. Yeah, and also he has Malganis, which although like not necessarily a heal. And all taunts. Um, 
I, he has seen one big game hunter as well. So. But he still has all taunts, right? He hasn't played a single taunt. Yeah, I don't think we've seen a Sunfury or an Argus this game. Yeah. And he still plays Draxus as well. So although it's a bit dicey versus Druid, he's sat on 16 anyway, so... And enter freaking Morganis when BGH is out. Yeah. Hmm. So you're trying to threaten to, f uh, to threaten your opponent by hero powering face instead of killing the two one, because then he thinks, okay, he might just kill me next turn w without anything on the board, right? So he would bank on playing minions. That's not something you want to do, like you want to see a, a, as a druid player anyway. But this this tells you that you don't have the combo for next turn anyway. Yeah, I think the I think the way he's going here is as, as well as that he's actually uh, trying to make the Dread Infernal trade into the five five as opposed to the three three and the two one. Um, the Void Caller is pretty interesting. Is is Void Caller? Oh, he's not just Void Caller Shadow Flame. There and then Sh run the Sh three three. In. Shadow Flame is so such a good card in this. It's match. very valuable against Druid in general. Also, no, no, I don't, like if he attacks with the with the. Um, Infernal and he uh, kills the Malganis, the Infernal would go down, like still to like yeah. 6 3. So it's like a lot of value. Oh. Well, those are those are cards you usually don't want to see. But to be fair, like when, when you n uh, saw BGH being out, like how does a Druid kill this? Combo. And you're sure that your opponent does, doesn't have the combo because he, he would have used the hero power less then, right? Yeah, to some lethal. Mm -hmm. Well, so it, w it wouldn't have been lethal, yeah, but, but there was a yeah, chance it was, of yeah, yeah, lethal. Yeah, yeah, it signified right? that, that he could actually win the game with it. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think what he can actually even draw into, with with like the wrath or something, because nothing else on the on the board at the, uh, in the hand, sorry, at the moment, is uh, is looking too great. He's gonna play one of the wild growths and get. Oh, oh. look at that! Now he's just missing what? the coin. Yeah. <laughs> Just missing that pesky coin. Half of them innovate. Well, he can still uh, force of nature and wrath just to kill off the Malganis. Uh, well, you have to do it, otherwise you're dead. Yeah, it's just the six six is still going to uh, cause a huge issue here. Uh, I, I think that's that way too soon. Uh, yeah. He would have yes. actually had a good chance to win this game, to be honest. Even. Yeah, I, I'm quite not sure what <laughs> would you concede here. Like it was still not. It we still didn't end. Especially as you've not seen, you've seen a dart bomb already. Yeah, we saw that. Uh, you're not expecting obviously the PO combos. You've seen the hellfire, so you've seen the there's dark not too peddler, many more. Right? Yeah, you, you've seen the peddler. There's not too many more things that they could use to burst, actually. So that happened actually two series ago, also with Moody. You 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 were casting that where he double in away. Like he had plays and he like roped and ended his turn, didn't do anything, but he had like plenty of ways to yeah. <laughs> actually still continue the game. Okay. I'm I'm really surprised by that because Hearthstone is a game which can be turned around in one turn, and uh, I think Druid was is one of those classes that can do that with the help of of the combo. And he still had one Force of Nature in his deck, so yeah, he, so he would use that Force of turn. Nature this turn to clean up uh, the big threat, the big friend, sorry, and uh, the Malganis. He still had the Druid of the Claw as well, didn't he? Also, Law for Heal. <laughs> Get the lore, the second lore in hand for heal. Right. Yeah. So basically, use the heal to draw one one more card. That's the translation yeah. in this situation, right? Well, plus as well, if you healed, then you don't. Uh, would you die the following turn? No, no he sure. combos clears and then he has heal and. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, re really interesting one. Uh, the druid of the claw looked really good early on to deal with the. Uh, that the that boss. was an interesting turn, right? We 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 talked about that a lot, and I still think he should have gone for the bomb for the second bomb. Just leave out the Drake. Doesn't really matter. You have seen that your opponent doesn't have any refs, doesn't have any swipes. He won't yeah. capitalize on that on that spell power. Yeah, right? you just go for the odds and for the for the value. Like yeah, emperor surviving a turn. It's like the value is just it's insane. Yeah, per it's turn. The second like time it's like you have zero mana dark bomb, yeah. six mana twisting nether, and a one mana dark dark peddler, which is basically like a two drop would generate a one drop. So it's better than shredder. Because yeah. it's instant. <laughs> but uh, now we'll see. It's 2-1 for Powder. And he, he is on the match point to advance to the finals of PGL Spring Tavern Tales. Yeah, and he's mm. probably feeling pretty confident as well. Because th this Warlock's just been doing good for him today for a start. But also he has uh, what's... Uh, it was Patron, right? 
Yeah, because he, he played Patron versus Tysis Control Warrior. Yep. So he also has Patron as his backup deck against Secret Paladin. So Paladin's definitely feeling confident here. Yeah, he even can... versus this Paladin, he has Hellfire and Demon Wrath, which are pretty key early on just to sweep the board before the Mysterious Challenger comes out. Yeah, and he just beat one of the hardest matchups as well. Yeah. And now he has like a good matchup. So that's really like, something. I would think about keeping the Bacon Hunter in this matchup. Because it's. It's so easy with this deck to clean up the board before uh, before the Mrs. Challenger gets to the um, gets to the board, right? And then you can use the big game hunter to just clean it up after the event triggers, right? Also, the Morton. I think you always keep Morton against any aggro ish deck. I think he kept both sweepers. Oh, now he has three. Now he has three. That also speaks for keeping the Morton, like Hellfire. Yeah. yeah. Auto keep because. Then it means you will not kill them first. Minions, till turn 4, you will drop low and then you can play the Molten. That's the third time we've seen Moody <laughs> with a competitive spirit in his opening Is he going to play it? <laughs> and there were two occasions when the competitive spirit turn 1 would have been amazing or at least very good. And this time, I feel it's like the worst one. Mm. Wor worst of the occasions, so probably yeah, play I it think this time instead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he'll probably play it under what time we think he shouldn't. Yeah, this because is like because here you can actually just go something like like creeper, juggler, uh, and then this is one of the creeper occasions and then juggler comp spirit and then yeah. trade and then have the minions. This is one of the matchups where the competitive spirit in one is actually, I think, bad. So, but when you play against the druid, against the zoo, it's, yeah, I think it's really awesome to just play it, bluff it, and get the advantage of having the competitive spirit at some point of the game, and instantly buff even one creature might make a huge difference. Yeah. And now there's all of the two drops. So uh, what do you actually like here? Because if it always feels like whenever you knife juggler on two, it just gets dark bombed, no, no matter what. Um, so but it's a Dreamer Jackson Warlock. He has one dark bomb. It still feels like they always have dark yeah, bombs. <laughs> now you have to think mm. about what is like the... Um, yeah, you're taking a risky approach and what is the gain? Yeah. The gain would be like two damage. Is it worth it to get for two damage? Is it relevant? No. Yeah, I think because uh, he, he doesn't have like muster or anything like that to gain the extra juggles, uh, you know, in the follow-up from there. I think yeah. mini bots just, just okay. Maybe the creeper because he has come spirit next turn. So then he can like mm. trade the creeper into something, create more tokens and then gain potentially more benefit from comp spirit. And, and juggler master plays right into hellfire. That's, yeah. that's usually very bad anyways. But the, uh, the Creeper doesn't trade into anything, so Minibot is just by far the best. It also contests a Peddler. Peddler is like the number one card you expect. Yeah. Turn one you expect Zombie Chow, turn two Peddler. But it's the card the Warlock wants, right? You yeah. know, they, they want that Peddler on turn two, just to get the one drop straight away. And if he life taps, you expect like a Drake. And yeah. then it's good to play a Secret, because then it could be rapid tense if, if you're playing this. Yeah. Well, the Avenge is always a nice anti-AOE card, because now if you open plans to do something about one of your minions that need, he buffs the uh, the mini board. It's, it's either having the the uh, the, um, the holy shield, or it doesn't have it, right? After after the hell hell uh, hel oh my god, I can't even you got pronounce this. the, the hellfire. easiest words. The hellfire. <laughs> if you hellfires this after like. Knife Juggler, because that, that would be like his own out in his hand. Then you get the Avenge uh, on a, just a 2 2 minion, which is not bad. If it's a Dark Bomb, you still it get the Avenge, but on a minion with the shield, so which is even more awesome. And if it's a Redemption, then your opponent doesn't want to do it anyway. Yeah. Right? So, I think this is a good turn when you actually think about playing the Redemption and the Knife Juggler just to push your opponent into um, playing, into, uh, playing the, the Wolves, right? Juggler. Okay, he went for the competitive spirit this time. Gara, please, input. Yeah, you just expect a minion and that his bot will survive. And it's like the best turn for him to get value out of the competitive spirit for the with his hand for the foreseeable future. He will it's probably the only turn where he can buff two minions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, you just expect hundred percent like ninety percent of the time a minion here. Life tap into a minion. Like either um gang boss or a coin break. So he was right, and oh. he has like a strong board here. Sucks. Look, this is the games you lose. You draw three secrets. The the magical number is four. I think I never won a game where I drew four secrets against any. An Unless you have secret keeper. Even with secret keeper, you get silenced or removed, and then then the mm. it's it, it cannot win you the game. It's like you don't have card draw. I think we have different opinions on that because I feel like when Undertaker, uh, sorry, uh, when yeah. secret keeper is just being played in turn one, especially in Agron 
mirror matches? Yeah, I'm not, not talking about aggro mirror matches. I said against any control deck. If I oh, do okay. Then I mis misunderstood. Yeah. Sorry yeah, it, I never won a game. Like, yeah, it's yeah. impossible. Like, it, it's just impossible. Like, he drew free already. Yeah. Like, the chances that he now wins is like... Pff, Freaking 20 or 40 percent. Yeah, you Super definitely old. need to be able to just do the, the old, you know, yeah. from the Steelers Challenger Paladin curve. Like, and uh, just to put on enough pressure for them not to be able to deal with it. But it's definitely going to be rough now, as even like just the trade in Hellfire that does the By the way, in. look at that. What can happen now? If he pops the Haunted Creeper, you can use the Mind Control tech to get a 50 50 on a really big minion. If it's. Or. You can just use Hellfire. It's also good. Hmm, is it? You could attack well, attack into the shield, then Hellfire. Leave the tokens. But the tokens will get the Avenge. Yeah. It's like, it's just two one ones. It's it's better to attack the shield for sure. Like, if it busts the mi uh, minibot, oh yeah. That's the punish, I feel like. So yeah. now we just... Oh, oh yeah, now we just, just takes the, the minibot! minibot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh god, what oh, okay. It's a super punish. So... There are two outcomes that were really bad. Oh. One outcome that was okay that because was you you get the n the juggle too. If you get the knife juggle, you get the juggle because of it. So you have okay. additional chances to okay. kill the one one. Okay. So it was like super good. He, he went for a 50-50, but was it worth it? Like he has the hellfire, right? Like does he have to take the 50-50? That, that was my initial question. Yeah. I think the problem is as well, like with that kind of risk, it can really pay off. But he doesn't have Reno in hand, and he doesn't have a heal bot in hand. So, like, if you look at the damage that's represented now, as well as another blessing of kings and into avenge this turn. Well, it's two of lethal. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, now. it's crazy. But, but yeah, because it's turn five, it's perfect to smog because there's no Reno next turn. Yeah. So, yeah, and you want to finish the game like next turn. You can even finish it with consecration. <laughs> oh my god! If you play it, because some people are not playing it at all. And and Hellfire doesn't help anymore. Like the only thing he can have is Shadow Flame, like yeah. or something. Yeah. Nah, that's a very good decision. I like this. Really like this. But Shadow Flame is that's not even enough, right? Uh, I think uh, Shadow Flame. Uh, the secret's of end, right? So what does he need? Yeah, Shadow Flame is not. Oh enough. yeah, it's not because you don't have enough minions to trade any extra damage. Wow, well, uh, but you have Molten Giant in Shadow Flame, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. Molten or he just plays a Belcher Molten Giant. That, that might work as well. Oh, he's checking Repentance first. Yeah. I call. think the Molten Giant Shadow Flames, um, I think that's really better here because you can deal with the secret as well. Mm -hmm. That's a good call. Um, I think actually <laughs> actually the Belcher is safer. Now you die to any weapon. Or mm, not most of a battle, so on oh, yeah. Cork Hammer yeah. and True yeah, Silver Champion. I think it gives the opponent more outs this way. But if you play the Belcher... But, uh, yeah, yeah, but I don't oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh my uh, god! Uh, yeah, because like he kills the knife juggler with the Drake, so he doesn't have the juggles, and he has the Belcher. But Varia, like Paladin usually doesn't run silence. It gives him just I more outs. To I, the I, I think every single Paladin we saw today was we've having seen, a, Yeah, like, we've a seen silence. single Paladins run right Owl um, the, this whole weekend, actually. But it's one card, right? Yeah, but it's so. still less outs. Yeah. Yes, that's true. So if you would have played the Belcher and, and the Molten Giant alongside yes, it, right? Yes, of course. So and you kill the juggler. You kill the juggler. You ki you um, also pop the divine shield, right? With the one one anyway. Yeah. But you give the second avenge. Yeah, but um, you have slime plus Belcher. It tanks the two minions. There's two minions on board. So, uh, but, you but you die to the cock hammer anyway. Yeah, that's because yeah, it kills little the slime. Yeah, the so that's if true. he gets through silver champion, you die anyway too yeah, because it clears the first stage. The, the the weapon I always clears true. the second stage of the belcher, so you always go through with a with a minion. Yeah, that makes sense. He would have just lost, but he basically like just playing greedy with the MC tag just basically lost him the game, because he d he had the clear earlier mm -hmm. with like way more yeah. life. The Hellfire is such an MVP in this in this matchup, yeah. and he didn't use it at all. Especially right? because he had Molten, so he's yeah. gaining like a yeah, secondary yeah. benefit from the Hellfire as well. You you go for those like coin flip plays when you're forced to do it when it's your only play. But mm -hmm. he had like a really good remove with the Hellfire and he got really screwed by the then with the Avenge RNG on the mini bot and there's like no owl, and he got the kings and SM Orc and that's it. And the Cockhammer to finish up the game. There's just the extra little cherry <laughs> <laughs> on top icing on the cake. Yeah, that's what's better than a Cockhammer finish. <laughs> But now it's going to be the last game, which is going to be Powder's Patron Warrior versus the Secret Paladin of Moody. So again, 
probably have to lean towards Patron being slightly favoured here. Don't know if you agree, Gara. Gara said before that it's like 50-50 yeah. for him. Okay. I think that Patron is slightly favoured, but only slightly. Yeah. Against Sigurd probably? Yes. I think it's, it's, yeah, it's good for it. Not like yeah, you just said 50-50. What? This matchup? Hell no, against Zoo. <laughs> then against Zoo. Zu and Patron is much closer, but not Secret Paladin. I think that's like a pretty good fight against okay. Paladin. We've seen Moody running two Cog Hammers. Um, have we seen even a true silver out of Moody yet? Or has he just gone for two Cog Hammers instead? Oh, well, that's interesting. So I, I know there's pe people playing uh, the list which would just remove the true silver completely. Because the Divine Shield value for the mirrors and, th and things like that. It's mm, a lot of value okay. from in the aggro matchups. I really like the weapon though, because it's so beautiful to just kill the Naja Drake. Yeah, that's uh, true. How many of your drakes have you really seen? Then? A lot. Every druid plays other drakes nowadays. Double cock hammer. Yeah, we were just talking about it for the past two minutes, guys. He likes cock. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh. He likes the hammer. He likes it's hammer hammers. time. I just said he likes cock hammers. What, what, what do you want from me? <laughs> nothing, nothing. He's a cog master. Right, Gara? It's a cock master. Yeah, you must know your stuff, right? To, to say that thing, those things. That hand is terrible from the page, Maria. For now. And that hand is great from the Secret Paladin. <laughs> For now. W you keep always Mr. Challenger if you're going for a uh, second, right? Always? Play it. I feel like you always keep it because it's like, when, an example, when I play Hunter, yeah. I always keep Savannah Hyman against the Warrior when I'm going second. Oh, you're talking mm. about this matchup. Yes, I'm, like. When you play against Warrior, yeah. you always keep the biggest threat in your hand if it's playable on before 10 7. Or Azure Drake, an example, because it's, it filters out the, the deck and you still put a threat on the board, even though it dies at Death Spite. And the thing is, in this matchup as well, it actually give, right. makes you. Be, it's pretty key to get the challenger out, try and get them out before patrons hit the board. Um, mm -hmm. And it gives you like a turn quicker, potentially, to get that challenger on the board. So, um, yeah, I agree, though, Gar. I think this hand's pretty good. Yeah, it's the advantage um, to turn one. Like against control decks, it's the best secret. Like if you have to draw a secret, then let me draw the uh, advantage. Do, do you really think there's a need to coin mm. here? God, no. Yeah, I was going to say, just, oh, sorry, it is Moody. Oh, he's just going to hover over all of the cards first. <laughs> um, but yeah, sorry, yeah. It's just, it looked like he's got a coin. Maybe I was like, I don't know what. Are you going to turn to Owl? Like, what's the play? So getting Avenge on the board uh, early is not terrible. It's not like the, the worst opening you can have. Um, so this is a control warrior? No, it's Patron. Looks like a control warrior. It does for now. look like a control warrior. For now. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, a bit more defensive with it. I think it's like two sludge pouches and the low feather that we've seen from it previously. So, definitely needs a weapon, though, I think, for powder. Yeah, in, yeah, the yeah. in theory, he has the best answers mm. for Patron Warrior. All those cards, so like Unstable Ghoul, Armor Smith, Death's Bite, Patrons. Like, how do you kill three Patrons? Yeah. Equality Consecration, man. Everyone plays that in Secret Paladin. Oh, in, it's so in, funny in though. In Poland, maybe. Like it's <laughs> Polish meta. Uh, and we also have ketchup on, on this, on top of it. Because you use ketchup on everything in Poland. On pizza. Yeah, and we pizza also, especially. for me it's normal. It's like people look at me, I'm crazy. You're like Bosnian. We get... I'm Serbian, but we, we, have <laughs> we have pizza with ketchup on it, but we put extra ketchup on it. Okay. It's normal. Yeah, I know, because it's a Polish thing too, but yeah, it's, it's horrible. Like <laughs> <laughs> but, there's, but there's ketchup on it already. Just put in more ketchup, just because we have to like put more ketchup on it. But it's a different taste, because you know, the the initial one is natural, and the the one you put yeah. on it is, is artificial. Yeah, <laughs> more ketchup, man. It's just it's the principle of ketchup. This is a really rough turn three for uh, for powder there. Yeah, that's, that's just awful. Just armor up. It wasn't even like, oh, turn two, armor up, fine. It's like turn three, is, uh, just has nothing. Would probably prefer the Acolyte or something there. He does have a good turn four and five. Coke Hammer looks great here. You kill the armor smith, you have a better mini bot than it was before because it gains taunt. It still has the Vine Shield, so it's a perfect thing against the Warriors because they, they can't go through the first initial phase uh, of the taunt. Which is basically a better Neutron at this point. Awkward yeah, okay. silence. No, <laughs> I, I just, just wait and see what he does. I, mean, I know yeah, Moody likes to take his time. Some right? pro players actually oftentimes ignore Armor Smith's 
mm. uh, and kill them later because they don't see it as a big threat. But I'm really like always. It doesn't matter Weapon what I play. Threat. I'm really like into uh, killing armor smith as <laughs> soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm just too scared. Like if a taunt comes out, it just gets so much more heal over time. It also enables better rage and all. Armor smith behind the belters are like the wet dream, right? Yeah, it's like the, the most cancerous thing <laughs> in a control deck. <laughs> Proving the point that the word cancer can be used for any deck that people don't like. <laughs> it's just cancer meta. Yeah. <laughs> the control meta. Whenever one plays control decks Priest. and and it takes two hours to complete a single game. It's cancer. But then when games go hyper aggro and it takes four turns, it's also uh, cancer. Yeah. You just probably drew the worst card in the deck. Competitive spirit and redemption are equally worse. Well like he can kill the pile to shredder right now. Just yeah, I think clearing off the Keep shredder is not too bad here. On your own mini bot, kill the Palter Shredder. Hope your opponent will spawn a 3 2 2 2 1 2 1 1 drop. What was Don't that again, Luther? <laughs> it's a lot of numbers that I'm <laughs> pronouncing wrong. Two health or one health minions. <laughs> yeah. The owl is fine. Yeah. It's like next turn you play competitive this, uh, the challenger and you want to have as many minions on board as possible for before the challenger. Uh, for the Avenger buff to split it. And mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good point. That's and you, point. yeah, always before the challenge, you just want to get as many minions. Also, like, if you would play a minion, I would not trade. I would just pass, just to not have the Avenger, just to have like a highest possible chance to not have the Ava Avenger on my challenger. Hmm. Well, this is gonna probably work in a. Uh in Moody's favor to a certain extent. If he chooses, if Power chooses to use the Despot and clear, he's going to use one Avenge, and then the Mysterious Challenge is going to pull the other Avenge straight out of the deck. Yeah, so he's going to get horrible. a double value there. Yep. But, but there are two executes. Yeah. yeah, he has to do it. That's. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not saying there was potentially a, a yeah. fair play. Yeah. But it's just going to. It's just a bit rough that the Avenge, the turn before the Challenger comes out. The, the only good thing what he has going for him here is he has 32 life, which is awesome. Like usually you are in the same position, but you're at 15 or so. Mm. So, coin Mysterious Challenger, is it good? Like, you, uh, the yeah. only bad scenario is that the opponent has two executes. I mean, yeah. his game plan right till now was, I'm gonna play coin, Challenger, on five. Yeah. Does that also force the... Uh, hang on. Could Avenge save the 1-1 one -one from dying from the Whirlwind effect? Or is it guaranteed to go on one of the other two buff minions? I think it can save the 1-1, one -one, right, Avenge? Um, so he'll attack in the whirlwind will go, but then Avenger proc. But that depends when the the tr the weapon was played, the depth spide. It was played before the secrets, right? Does that Aldrin work with interact with secrets as well? I'm not sure. I'm not going to try and pretend. <laughs> I think it actually works. So, because okay. if the one one just dies and that's it, this is really good. Because double execute, the Avenge goes on one of the what two big know? minions, mm -hmm. so they get even bigger, and then you just kill them yep. both. So it's really huge. That's why it's that's why it's quite important. I think he has to inner rage first. If he, if Avenge buffs the one one, he's like screwed. But we are not sure if it actually buffs it, right? We'll yeah, but get it to know it. It's thirty percent, but if it does, then no, because he's the whirlwind effect might kill it. That's what we were checking. Because can the avenge save? The yes, of course. The token, yeah. it does, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, because look, the token doesn't die yeah, properly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought it did. Yeah, okay. Now double execute yeah. will punish him severely. Well, do you even need to put to play the second one? Yeah, you do, right? You don't want uh. to lose a belcher to it. You could play a ghoul. It contested, his weapon doesn't kill it, and it's very awkward. Like, how do you kill the ghoul as a. with the competitive spirit? Wait, was that second competitive spirit? No, no, no. 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 First, first. No, no. You can inner rage, it's probably better. Like, there's still more threats. Like, execute is good in this matchup, it's the best card. But well, there's also brawl, right? No, wait, he's no. playing no. patron, never mind. <laughs> I'm thinking actually back because he uh, he knew the opponent has still a coin and he would expect a coin challenger that he would have played the lower tap instead uh, despite. Mm. I don't know if it was like too bad of a play because like it's so strong also against Hunter when they play right into a coin high man and then mm -hmm. you slam the lower tap or against Druid. You know when they, they want to coin out the seven drop and then you play lower tap. Yeah. yeah, that just wins you the game so often. Yeah. Mm. Do you guys like a uh, like redemption belcher here? Oh, well, kill the the one three first. Well, you have a still big minion on, out there, so why not? But the redemption, there's a problem that the redemption might just proc on the owl, proc on the owl, yeah. and you're like, well, I guess I used 
one mana to gain one mana. Yeah, it's de definitely a thing. And your opponent saw two avenge, two avengers, and no redemption. No redemption. So he knows that this is redemption because it had to be in the hand. Yep. What would Powder give for a patron instead of this sludge bird? <laughs> Probably two more patrons. Yep. Well, it's still it's not bad. The, the, uh, the only thing that matters here very much is that what Kara pointed out to is the fact that the warrior is like, eh, I have 28 health. Yeah, so nowhere near lethal. Uh, I can just wait. And the Paladin definitely runs out of juice. And even if there's a... Because there's the Execute still there. If he kills Tyrion, then everyone's like, you know, you know, oh, the Ashbringer's insane, it's 15 damage. If the warrior's on 30 health, and it mm -hmm. just doesn't matter, right? Like, it's, it seems to be pretty okay, so... And Powder did a good job Let there of uh, keeping track of the secrets, which is something we saw him slightly uh, not quite play around properly versus Tice earlier. Now it's very important to uh, maintain the board control. I keep, I really like here the Keeper and trading yeah. the Sludge Belcher here. You just saw like in a rage, you know, like when the opponent's holding three cards, it could be easily like a battle rage as well, right? Not mm. getting value out of it. You have board, there's no brawl in the Especially because you've got Tyrion next turn. Well, like, uh, why not? You're going to build up on that board and yeah. make it extremely difficult for the warrior to deal with. And you've already seen one execute. So if you clear the board, the odds on him having like an effect to prop the uh, divine shield after and something to prop the, uh, you know, the, the damage and then the execute where you still have the weapon and the board. So yeah, I, I agree. I think this play is really good. Yeah, it's completely different than in the zoo game where he used like the keeper when the void caller was on board. Then yeah. you really need it. But here you don't save it for like a potential Dr. Boom or Grimage. Here you really need it for the pressure. Definitely when you're not th th this far ahead yeah. on board. Well, that's one turn too late. Yeah. You had the inner rage the turn before. So now you need a second inner so rage or a second whirlwind or a death spite, which then needs to turn so that's kinda late. So do you guys actually now like Blessing of Kings better? Than Sec and Secret Keeper and Noble Sack? Because you can Blessing of Kings the one one, kill off the belch and use the weapon or the owl and well, then keep pushing. You know that your opponent's not running brawl, so putting yeah. more threats on because board now, is not bad. Now like suddenly with just Belcher you just don't really need Tyrion because you have Blessing of Kings. Noble mm -hmm. Sacrifice will soak a weapon hit. So it's even more delayed damage and defends your minions even like heavier. And even the, even the secret keeper getting you know like the buffed into a two three like you represent so much damage on board. I understand both plays. I think both are just game winning plays. Yeah. I think it's just a different way to win the game. The battle for okay, he values the. First stage of the Belgian So battle. double, it, second winner will win would be the best draw here for sure. Yep. Second, second will win would be insane. Uh, no, that doesn't fit the mana curve. Because you can't really play execute if you bank on acolyte whirlwind patron. Yep. And the problem is if you Ooh. do anything else, the patron is just die. Yeah. And then you, you know that's just game, right? Yep. Yeah, he has to acolyte and pass. It's this only chance, and it will not end good. Hey, speak to me. King's too strong. Well, if he plays kings on Tyrion... <laughs> <laughs> All in. The value of the Divine Shield. <laughs> Against that 1-3, potentially. Well, the 1-3 will get killed by the Keeper yeah, of Old yeah. Man, right? Secret Paladin doing Secret Paladin things. Let me think. Hmm. Well, is he still needs the second whirlwind. Like without the second whirlwind, this will be very bleak. And that's not a whirlwind. I think it's too much damage. What? Wow, he actually did that, lol. Yeah, I was joking. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was <laughs> he heard, clearly. Yeah, th those headphones are like not <laughs> some cold man. Is it be purely because he just didn't want it to be insta-executed on his uh, Blessing of Kings? That's like the only way he can lose yeah. the, the game right now. I'm just trying to work out what was going on in, in the mind of Moody. That's like a general rule overall. You don't buff the minion that is weak to silence. That's like a similar thing. Yeah. That's like the weakest minion. That <laughs> so how can the boom bots potentially kill oh off baby. <laughs> Oh, the RNG. Let's go. Oh, that Never was horrible. Lucky. I've never Sound seen a 10-10 Tyrion. Well, that was it. Yeah, Moody crazy. wins 3-2 against Powder. Unfortunately for Powder, it's the end of the journey. He finishes top four.
at VGL Spring Tavern Tales, while Moody will have a chance to get the trophy. Right? Okay, scoop in. We need Moody here. <laughs> he looks pretty moody, even though he just won. You can ask him some questions about his mood. Hi, Moody. Again. Hello again. So how are you doing, man? Uh, better. better. Better than the last time, yeah. <laughs> okay. Gara, any questions? Shoot. Um, I just you looked moody after you won. That's why uh, I was wondering if you're like uh, moody right now. Or I'm, happy. I'm I was just a bit stressed. Stressed? It was pretty stressful situation uh, for sure, and you had like a pretty bad matchup as well in the end, right? Uh, yes, I was so a little bit unf unfavored. So I'm happy for you, and you played well. You did good decisions, and I think. Lothar wants to ask you some questions. Yeah. No, Raven, do you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll wait for your questions because you might well cover them. Why did you play the Blessing of Kings on the Tyrion? Well, because I know Patron doesn't uh, doesn't play uh, Big Game Hunter. And he needs mm -hmm. to, if he wants to execute, he needs to get rid of the Divine Shield first. So he should have something like Slam, Whirlwind, Execute. And it, it's really hard. Okay. Well, that was his only out anyway, so that that yeah. was all other yeah. when we discussed yeah, it, right? He had like Whirlwind execute, and his only chance would be if you buff uh, Tyrion and he gets a second Whirlwind. Because <laughs> then he slams and Patron. And and if that I, I have the weapon, so yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you had him at like I think at that point he was at like 13 health after the attack or something, yeah. so <laughs> quite low. But uh, but yeah, d there you go. So definitely, uh, definitely. An interesting oh, the concede button. Oh, <laughs> we missed it. Yeah, no, we missed the uh, famous. Escape concede. But congratulations, Moody. Thank you. Now you have to play in the finals. Well, you don't have to, but you, you can. <laughs> I can. Uh, you probably should. Yeah, you I probably should. should. You, you have a shot at the champion's title, and you will be facing one of the next uh, one of the next players in the next match. So I'm sure you want to watch it closely, see what decks are they using, especially that Tricky Style did use on one deck in his match, right? So yes. you want to get some valu valuable informations about his other two decks, I unless he, again, free out someone with the Hunter, right? But that's about it. But congratulations again. Thank you. And um, it's, go it, it's good to see you performing here in your on your home turf. So wish you luck in the finals, right? Th thank you very much. Okay. I think that's it, and we'll be preparing the next match. So we sh we'll jump into a short commercial break before the second semi-final of PGL Spring Tower Tales. Thank you, Gara, for being here on the casting couch. I hope you will I will never cast with you again. <laughs> wow. I enjoyed it. Oh, it's hard. <laughs> okay, Raven, we'll be right back, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, thank you for watching, and now uh, we'll be right back with the other semi-final of the tournament. <laughs> 